In this video, I'll take you through the basics of the Affinity Photo user interface, which should feel pretty familiar if you've used anything like Photoshop. In the center of the interface, you've of course got your image, and you can have multiple images open at once, switching between them using the tabs at the top. On the left hand side, you have a tool panel. Looking at the tools, I've got mine set up as two columns, and though you could choose one, only with two columns do you see this little control down here, the color switcher. I find it very useful, and so if you've only got one column of tools at the moment, head to the View menu, then Customize Tools, and make sure you're viewing at least two columns of tools. Then hit Close. The tools above, though, are really important. The Hand, which is the View tool, will let me move the image around, whereas the Brush tool will let me paint on the image. It's really important to know which tool you're on, and it'll save you a lot of time if you get to know some of the shortcuts, and more on that soon. At the top of the interface here, we've got this panel, which in Affinity Photo is called the Context Toolbar, and this governs things like the size of the brush and the opacity of the brush. Many of the shortcuts you might be familiar with from other image editing applications will work here, so the numbers along the top of the keyboard, for example, will change the opacity of the brush, 0 being 100, 4 being 40, and 57, if you type it quickly, getting you to 57. There's checkboxes, little toggle switches, and lots of sliders. As you might have expected, you can drag on the words to get a scrubby slider, you can click and type numbers, you can use the up and down arrow keys on the keyboard, and many other shortcuts. If you think something might work, just give it a shot, it probably will. On the right hand side of the interface, you have a selection of panels. As you might expect, most of them have a little menu in the corner, which will govern a few of the additional options. And some of them, like the important layers panel here on the right, have additional icons at the bottom. Some are buttons and some are menus, like these adjustment layers. Or filter layers, and more on those soon. If you want to use a panel that isn't open, you'll have to head to the View menu, and this may seem a little odd, head to the Studio submenu. This is where all the extra panels live, rather than in the Window menu. Along the very top of the interface is a toolbar, and like many other applications, you can actually customise the buttons that are in this toolbar. Right now, though, you'll find plenty of useful options which will let you add masks and govern if snapping is active, and this important option, which is the Assistant. This is like a mini preferences dialog, which lets you control how the interface works. So, for example, if you were to uh, add a filter layer to the selection, do you want it to add as a child layer or a new layer? Things like that. There's also this collection of buttons up here. And this switches you between the different personas. When you switch to a different persona, and for example if I flick to this raw image, it's going to flick to this develop persona, it will change the user interface, giving me different tools on the left, different panels here on the right, and different controls overall. In this case, the develop panel is how you deal with raw images, and we'll be coming back to this later in the course. Just don't be thrown if you find yourself in one of these other personas. As you might expect, commands live in menus and have predictable shortcuts. One that you definitely need to know about is undo, and there's no fancy undo shortcut here, it's a standard command Z. You can command Z as much as you like to undo repeated steps, and command shift Z to redo them. A few more important shortcuts. You can zoom in and out with Command plus and minus, fit the view with Command zero, 
And the zooming shortcut you may be familiar with does work, it just requires a little bit of extra finger work. If you hold down the space bar, then hold down the command key as well, you'll get to the zoom cursor. Click and drag to the right to zoom in and to the left to zoom out. But be careful when you do this shortcut to hold the space bar first, then the command key. If you do it the other way around, it'll beep at you and won't quite work. So space, then command, then click and drag. One final way to zoom, which some people prefer, is to hold Option or Alt and use the scroll wheel. One last thing that's worth knowing about is that in Preferences, you can change the keyboard shortcuts. Now, under Miscellaneous, I like to add a shortcut to Set Fill to Black and White. I'm going to use the D shortcut because that's a long-standing Photoshop shortcut. Another thing I like to do is to head to Tools and remove the shortcuts for things that I don't want to use. You can remove any shortcut by pressing this little X button next to the tool. It's important to know that if you assign the same key shortcut to multiple tools, for example, these two both have W, then you just need to press that same key to cycle between the tools. So if, for example, you want to press B and just get to the brush tool and not some of the other tools like the color replacement brush tool or the pixel tool, then simply remove the B shortcut from these two tools and you'll be fine. Now that we've got the basics of the user interface down, let's have a look at how to manipulate documents.